Section four of chapter 10 looks at hybridization. So in our previous section, we had looked at ammonia, NH3, and realized that if we just think about the atomic orbitals that we have now, their shapes, uh, we don't get the correct overall shape for the molecule of ammonia. We would have 90 degree bond angles when we know that we really should have around 109.5. So we're dealing with theories here. We're, we're trying to understand what's going on. So we, can, we come up with a new concept of our theory, and that's hybridization of atomic orbitals. We're going to add up our atomic orbitals, divide them back out, and get new shapes of our orbitals. So in our sp3 hybrid orbitals, which uh, pertains to our NH3 molecule, methane is also an example of it, we take, uh, remember this picture is reversed, uh, I accidentally messed that one up, so it should look like this. Uh, we have our atomic orbitals, we have the s, and then three orientations for our p orbitals, okay? and these are the orbitals that are coming from nitrogen. Nitrogen is our central atom. It's the one that's doing the bottom, the bonding, and it's the 2s and the 2px, 2py, and 2pz of the nitrogen that we're hybridizing. Okay. So we take our four atomic orbitals, or looking here, we have 1s and then 3ps, so 1 plus 3 is 4. Four atomic orbitals add them up, divide them by four, and we get our four hybrid orbitals. Okay. These allow for our proper bond angles to occur. So if we put all of these orbitals on our nitrogen, okay, so we have the four main lobes, and the other lobes either are in the other areas or they just kind of cancel each other out. They're not as big, so they're not going to be optimal for the overlapping. It's the larger lobes that will want to be overlapped. Hydrogen comes in with its S orbital. Hydrogen cannot hybridize because it doesn't have any other shapes to hybridize with. So the hydrogen comes in and overlaps one lobe of the hybrid orbital with its S orbital. Another hydrogen comes in on a different hybrid orbital, the third on the third hybrid orbital, and then the fourth remaining hybrid orbital is where the lone pair of electrons on nitrogen goes, and that allows for those lone pairs of electrons to be in the proper place, which was essentially above the nitrogen with the hydrogens below the nitrogen. Um, so just to kind of complete our picture, what do I want to have? Oh, for sp3, we're taking four orbitals, four atomic orbitals. Therefore, we get four hybrid orbitals, and we get four areas of electrons. When we have four areas of electrons, that corresponds to tetrahedral. So any atom that we're looking at, particularly central atoms, any central atom that has tetrahedral shape, it's going to have sp3 hybridization. If we look at our sp2 hybrid orbitals, we have three total orbitals. We start with three atomic orbitals. We hybridize and get three hybrid orbitals. So three atomic we have three areas of electrons where overlap can occur. Three areas of electrons corresponds to trigonal planar. So these three orbitals here are put on boron. Then <clears throat> the bond that occurs between boron and fluorine, in this case, we have an sp2 hybrid orbital overlapping with one of the p orbitals from fluorine. 
If we don't need to hybridize, we don't have to hybridize. This really is a, if we need hybridization to occur, we say hybridiz hybridization occurs. If we don't need hybridization to occur, say for in the example of hydrogen and fluorine molecules, we don't need to hybridize. SP hybrid orbitals, two atomic orbitals, the S and one of the Ps, two atomic orbitals get us two hybrid orbitals, two orbitals, two areas of electrons. That corresponds to an arrangement of electrons of linear. Down here, we're now hybridizing with D orbitals. So in this example here, this sp3d, we have an s plus three p's plus a d, so we have five total orbitals. The five main lobes are shown here all on one image. Uh, and so we have five areas of electrons, and this corresponds to trigonal bipyramidal. Over here, uh, this should be SP, sp3d2 hybrid orbitals. So I'll write that down so we can see it. We have six atomic orbitals, 1s, 3p, 2d, 1 plus 3 plus 2 is 6. Six areas of electrons shown all on the same uh, axes here. And that corresponds to an arrangement of electrons of octahedral. So any element or any, excuse me, any atom in our structures, if they have a trigonal bipyramidal um, arrangement of electrons, then they have sp3d hybrid orbitals. If they're octahedral, they're going to have sp3d2. If they're linear, sp hybridization. Uh, if they're trigonal planar, sp2. And tetrahedral is sp3. So the hybrid orbitals allow us to actually prove with the bond angles in our arrangement of electrons.